Alrighty, so today we're talking about women in STEAM. And you're like, what is STEAM? STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Math. So today we're going to be looking at some of these women who are very influential in um, STEAM and making a pathway uh, for us women to grow upon. Looking at Sally Ride here, Sally Ride was the first American woman in space. She was not only an astronaut, she was a physicist and an engineer. She was the youngest American astronaut to have traveled to space. She did this at the age of 32. Let's hear from her. The fact that I was going to be the first American woman to go into space carried huge expectations along with it. And that was made pretty clear just the day that I was told I was selected to the crew because I was also taken up to Chris Kraft's office, who was the head of the Johnson Space Center, because he wanted to have a little chat with me and make sure that I knew what I was getting into before I um, agreed to be on the crew. <laughs> but I was so dazzled just by the opportunity to be on the crew and go into space that I really don't remember very much of what he, what he said. On launch day, there was so much excitement and so much happening around us in the crew quarters, even on the way to the launch pad, going up the launch pad, you know, looking up and seeing, you know, this huge, you know, rocket that kind of sounds like an animal. You can kind of hear the gurgling and the hissing and, you know, it sounds like it's alive. I spent an enormous amount of effort just trying to stay focused. Try to, I tried to block out pretty much everything that was going on around me and just kind of put one foot in front of the other because it would have been way too easy to just be lost in the, in the moment. I didn't really think about it that much at the time um, because I just wanted to get the opportunity to do that. But I've, uh, I came to appreciate what an honor it was to be selected to be the, the first woman to get a chance to go into space. Next, we're looking at Beatrice Schilling. Beatrice was just amazing. One thing that she did was she saved hundreds of lives, hundreds of pilots' lives. How she did this? Well, she was a mechanical engineer. She was a mechanical engineer who solved the problem of stalling engines. So pilots were now able to fly their planes without having the issue of being stalled midair. On the side, she was also a daredevil. And this is actually her on a bike she made. Next, we look at Imogen Heap. She is a musician, but she uses technology to help her create and produce her music. Let's listen to her. Please come in. I'll take you down to the studio. I'm Imogen Heap, and I'm a musician. More recently, I've been developing these beautiful gloves that help me gesturally interact with my computer so that I can make music on the move, in the flow, and uh, more humanly, more naturally, engage with my computer software and technology. Um, so here they are. This is the latest one. This is an earlier one. And these are many other iterations. <laughs> what this glove enables me to do is access mappings inside my computer so that I don't have to go to a keyboard or a fader or a button. I can use say a fader instead of doing this, which is not very expressive or exciting for me or the audience, um, I can do this. So I'm moving around the scale by going up and down, down there, it goes down a fifth, um, or down a fourth. Um, and then I can change the filter like that. And I can go between different sounds by going up and down using the pitch. This is what we call pitch. This is what we call your. This is what we call roll. And here, filtering the sound and kind of pitch bending it. 
and then stopping the arpeggiator and starting it again. So these gloves have traditional bend sensors inside and this measures this kind of movement. So this may be naught and this may be 127. Um, and we're also using these fourchettes in here to get that kind of that action as well. Um, and when my finger is doing this posture, which is called one finger point, it changes to a different sound. And when my hands open, it's moving that sound. And if you can hear, it's going from left to right. So these gloves are the more recent gloves and uh, very exciting developments. Everything's in one physical glove rather than needing extra wires and everything. And the reason for that is mainly because of this, the board. But the main difference is it's now Wi-Fi enabled. And also we're trying to separate the hard tech from the soft tech. And at the moment, this is kind of in between. This still has the bend sensors, but it's also starting to look into e-textiles, which is electronic textiles. So we can actually get the bend uh, information through the difference in how much the pink bit is, is rippling. It's really exciting to see what people might do with hacking them. Um, so the software is going to be open source and so is the hardware. And um, we can't wait to see what people do with them. We want to make it available for everyone. All righty. So we're going to be moving on to our next scientist here. Please come in. And our scientist that we're looking at is Dr. Inderjeet Karur. So she is a doctor by training. However, she founded and is the president of a charitable society that made a home open to the poor, handicapped, diseased, and mentally ill. And what she does is she works there she helps those who live in this home to get better so she's not only charitable but she's also a scientist at heart next we're looking at bessie griffin bessie griffin was a physical therapist and a forensic scientist she decided that she wanted to help out some of the veterans that had come back from the war and were, who were unable to feed themselves because they lost their limbs. She f invented a device that was helping them eat, and later on she helped build one of the first prosthetics. Next, we're going to take a look at Rosalind Franklin. She was an English chemist and she took x-rays which have energy in them and she made contributions to the understanding of the structure of our dna rna viruses and other things as well so she was using this technology and her knowledge as a scientist to find out what makes DNA DNA? Why is it different than RNA? What do viruses have that are different than all of the, the above? Next, we have Katherine Johnson. Now, you may have heard about Katherine Johnson in a movie called Hidden Figures. Katherine Johnson... was a mathematician whose calculations about orbital mechanics, how things circled around another. She was a NASA employee and was making these calculations by hand because like we do now, doing it all by hand. And these calculations were important because they were calculating the safe, safe trajectory of the manned space flights. So 
there is people conservation and animal welfare issues. She is considered to be the world's foremost expert on chimpanzees. She worked with them. She lived with these chimpanzees and even worked with National Geographic. Let's hear from her. Louis Leakey sent me to Gombe because he believed that an understanding of chimpanzees in the wild would help him to better guess how our Stone Age ancestors may have behaved. It had long been thought that we were the only creatures on earth that used and made tools. Man the toolmaker is how we were defined. And here was David Greybeard using a tool. It was hard for me to believe what I'd seen. A few days later, I watched Spellbound as Temp set off to a termite mound, picked a small leafy twig, then stripped it of its leaves. That was object modification, the crude beginning of tool making. It had never been seen before. When I telegrammed the news to Lewis Leakey, he responded that we must now redefine man or accept chimpanzees as human. My observations at Gombe would challenge human uniqueness. And whenever that happens, there is always a violent uproar. There were some who tried to discredit my observations because I was a young, untrained girl and should therefore be disregarded. The result of it all, however, was that Lewis was able to obtain a grant from the National Geographic Society to continue my study. In addition, they would be sending out a photographer to document the chimpanzees. All righty, our next woman in STEAM is Augusta King, also known as Ada Lovelace. She was a mathematician who used her knowledge of algorithms to develop the first computer. So she was using math and using algorithms to create the first computer, create that tech. Now we have technology everywhere, and it's all thanks to Augusta. Next, we have Adriana Ocampo. She is a planetary geologist, and she found out about this comment that happened, and let's hear it from her. Yes, I mean, when I first saw that semicircle in this, um, in the Landsat mosaic images, immediately, immediately a spark went inside of me. Oh my God, could this be an impact crater? Could this be? And as you dig, as it happens in science all the time, the more you looked into a, a question, more questions appear. And that's exactly what happened. If this was an impact crater, when did it happen? How big must have been the, you know, potentially the asteroid or the comet? Could this be the one? And, you know, they, at the beginning, I didn't have any idea that this could have been the KT impact. But then when, as we looked into um, 
more into those questions. That's the extraordinary things that all the pieces start falling into place. And that's how discoveries happen. It's, it's the fascinated, fascinating thing about uh, the scientific process. Yes, I mean, when I... Oh, right. This is beautiful diving. <laughs> Next we have Miley Sanchez. So Miley was awarded the Presidential Early Career Awards for scientists and engineers. She was given the highest honors and for the beginning scientists who are in early stages of their career. So she works in research labs and she got all these highest honors for working in the labs. Really cool. Next we have Catherine Marquez. Catherine Marquez is a Bolivian biologist who specialized in bat research, and she found a species that thought was to be extinct. That's awesome. She found out this special bat. Next, we have Maim Balik. So you may have noticed that this is Amy from the Big Bang Theory, but she's actually a neuroscientist, as long as well as an actress and author. So here we go. I think something that's amazingly uh, cool about you is after Blossom, you went back to school for your PhD. What yes. did you get your PhD in? I got my PhD in, um, in neuroscience from UCLA. And, uh, wow. Yes, cool. thank you. And I, I like to say, besides getting you a part on the Big Bang Theory, I was also made the, spokesmers the spokesperson of Texas Instruments Calculators. So that's what you get with a PhD in neuroscience. <laughs> Big Bang Theory, and you're the spokesperson for graphing calculators. That is, uh, I actually do think that, I, I do applaud that. I, I love the idea that you decided, no, I want to go out and get a, a, a serious education. And I also know that <clears throat> Big Bang, that is a show that is very serious about getting the facts right. When right. they talk about science, they want the facts to be right. Even though right. I'm watching it, it could be anything. You know, I, right. I don't, I'm, I'm like a cat. I'm just, they could write anything on the board. <laughs> Would you, do you actually help them keep the facts straight as a neuroscientist? Um, you know, when I auditioned for the part, I, uh, on, on my resume under miscellaneous, it says PhD neuroscience, because I didn't know where else to put it on an acting resume. So right. I put it under miscellaneous. And uh, Bill where, Brady. Where most people put juggling. I did. Uh, speaks Hebrew, <laughs> Spanish, PhD in neuroscience. Wow. Um, and Bill Prady, our creator, executive producer at the audition, said, is this for real? I said, yeah, it kind of is. I have a PhD. So when they brought me back for the fourth season, he said they figured, why not make her what I am so that I can, you know, fix small things if they're wrong. But generally, they get pretty much everything right. So I talk to my writers about, like, oh, yeah, I'm not sure that was the funniest way to go. You correct them on no. That's, that's not the region of the brain that does that. <laughs> I love that. Doctor, Thank you. Uh, doctor, um, <laughs> could, you, yes. could you explain my... All righty, so she's using her science even in acting, helping each other out. That's pretty dang cool. Next, we have Sophie Germain. She won the grand prize from the Paris Academy of Science. So she worked on something that is called Fermat's Last Theorem and provided the foundation for mathematicians exploring the subject for hundreds of years after. She 
was kind of like the stepping stones for all the mathematicians that came after her. Next, we have Sabrina. Sabrina is a theoretical physicist from Chicago, Illinois, and she studies high energy physics. So she works on some crazy, crazy projects, and she is a proud first generation Cuban American, and she works in some of those public schools helping others out. Next, we have Danica McKellar. She is an author that helps encourage middle school and high school girls to have the confidence to succeed in math. She is actually a mathematician as well as an author. Let's listen to her. Hi, I'm Danica McKellar. Welcome to the Math Doesn't Suck channel on My Math Universe. Okay, so I've been acting since I was 12 years old on shows like The Wonder Years, and I still act today. I've done episodes of How I Met Your Mother and The Big Bang Theory, and I'm the voice of Miss Martian on a cartoon called Young Justice. And I also write math books. Yeah, math books. Believe it or not, I used to hate math. I was terrified of it. But then I finally figured out how to make math easier and not such a big deal. And then I felt smarter, I had more confidence, I was a better student and a happier person. And that's why I started writing math books, because I want you to feel the same way. My first book is called Math Doesn't Suck. There are a lot of things that do suck. I'm sure you can name plenty of them. Finding out your best friend lied behind your back, sucks. Getting acne, sucks. Parents getting divorced, totally sucks. Been there, but math doesn't have to suck. Do you like money? Most people do. Math is the language of money, and being smart in math will keep you from getting ripped off, it'll help you with planning and budgeting for parties and vacations, and prepares you for better paying jobs. And if you ever want to start your own business, guess what keeps the doors open? Math. But the best thing about math is that doing math makes you smarter and gives you that confidence that comes from feeling strong and capable, and that makes all of life better. What a lot of people don't realize is that being smart in math isn't something you're either born with or you're not. You're never stuck at one level of math smartness. The more math you do, the stronger your brain gets. It's like going to the gym for your brain. And every time you do a math problem that you thought you couldn't do and then you figure it out, you've just shown yourself that you're stronger and more capable than you thought. And that builds confidence from the inside out. Suddenly you're like, yeah, I can do math. And anything else that people think is hard, bring it on. That kind of inner confidence changes the way you walk into a room, it gives you a better smile, and it makes you feel great. You know, a lot of people think math is for other people, not them. And we've all heard the same stereotypes. That math is too hard, too boring, only for guys, only for nerds with glasses and pocket protectors, or that it's only for old men who look like Einstein. Or that if you're pretty, you can't be good at math. I mean, you don't need math because you're certainly never going to be a scientist. But math is for everyone. It's for you. And it'll make your life better, no matter what career you choose. So I'm going to help you out here and make math a little more pleasant. I have videos to help you out with homework. Alrighty, so she's just encouraging others and showing her love of math and how it has helped her and helped others. We're going to continue on with our next contestant, Marie Curie. She is the first woman to win a Nobel Prize. She is the only woman to win it twice. And the cherry on top here is that she's won a Nobel Prize in two different sciences. She is at like the backbone of our science, where we started off and we just built and built and built on that. We're coming to our last and final 
woman in steam. She's been in the news lately. Greta Thunberg. So she is an invent environmental activist. She started to be being an activist at the age of 15. She is outspoken about climate change and what we need to do to help our planet, help other species, help ourselves be able to make our environment a better place. Thank you for watching our Women in STEAM. I hope that you'll continue on looking into how women impacted STEAM, the STEAM field, but also how we can carry it on. Alrighty, here we're looking at Wonder Girl. She is a 24-year-old producer who has created beats with some of the, like, famous uh, people like Jay-Z, Rihanna, and more. Let's hear a little bit more about her. My experience has been, like, it's been all over the place, like, uh, up and down as a woman in the industry, like, because, like, just a lot of people don't take you seriously. Once they figure out, like, who I am and what I've done, they have a lot more respect for me and it's cooler. I feel like females are going to be taking over this year and for a while. I learned how to make beats by going on YouTube. I learned how to engineer that way to record vocals and all that stuff. So yeah, YouTube is the best. So it all started from like what my mom used to listen to back in the day, for sure. A lot of like Biggie and Tupac, and then R. Kelly. <laughs> my grandma bought me this keyboard, and I was just like making different little songs and ideas on that. My aunt bought me a computer, started making beats on that. So I guess it's my family that kind of helped me get there. I entered the beat battle when I was actually uh, 14. I guess like I just wanted to show my beats to people really and I didn't know how else to show it. You know, like I was already putting it online and stuff. I wanted to like leave the beat battle actually because like I was just overwhelmed. There's she was overwhelmed. However, she overcame this and she was and she was and still is producing some incredible beats.